So Natalia, would you please like to introduce yourself? Yes, hi. Um, I'm Natalia Burloff. I'm a professor of applied mathematics at the Department of Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics, University of Cambridge. I also work in Skoltech, uh, Skolko Institute of Science and Technology, where we set up the Center for Quantum Materials. So with your colleagues, you've built a quantum device designed to solve a particular very hard problem. Could you tell us about that problem? So this is a problem of constrained minimization. So imagine a function with many variables, many parameters, and therefore it's minimizing the landscape that lives in a dimension that agrees with the number of variables in your function. And of course, in many dimensions, it's very difficult to find the global minimum. You're very likely to get trapped in a local minimum, not in the lowest point, but some other points of this varying landscape. And this is a very hard problem to solve. It grows exponentially quickly with the number of variables, with the number of dimensions. And it's known to be in class NP hard problems, the hardest problems that people really are trying to find an algorithms for. In complexity, it's very similar to a travel salesman problem. The famous problem uh, that many of us played when we were children, find an optimal way uh, to pass through several given cities. It could be optimal in the time spent, optimal in the price paid, etc. And the complexity of this problem is growing as an exponential function with a number of cities. For instance, if you just compare various, various, paths, uh, or various routes to find an optimal one, already for 60 cities, it will take 1 billion years on a classical computer to find an optimal solution. That's how uh, exponentials really grow in this particular case. So instead of just doing this brute and force algorithmic search on many problems, you can do something smarter, and I hopefully will find, and hopefully we found this way to do it, uh, to do it perhaps smarter. So in our system, the physical system finds the global minimum immediately while it goes through phase transition. And um, how does the device work? So um, to do that, we use polaritons, uh, quasi-particles that consist of matter and light. So the idea is that you need to design and grow stacked layers of selected atomic species such as gallium, um, arsenic, indium, aluminium in such a way that we can control how electrons in the structures move and absorb light, absorb and emit light. And if uh, shiny mirrors are placed around the structures, around the so-called quantum wells, then the light circulates between the structure, reflects from the mirror, gets back into the quantum well, etc. And this recirculation of the energy actually can be thought of as a new quasi-particle called polariton. It's 10,000 times less in mass and effective mass than electron billion times uh, less than any atoms in any materials. So, but the particles of this kind, they can condense, they can form Bose-Einstein condensate. So they act as a little um, uh, oscillators and they can synchronize. So they can create this giant wave so that the quantum mechanics actually exhibit itself on macroscopic scale. So this is new state of matter, Bose-Einstein condensate. And when the particle condense, they start emit light. So in other words, we made the structures in such a way that they can condense in the global minimum of the function that we are minimizing and start shining there, showing the way to the optimal solution. So what does this mean for NP-hard problems? Um, to solve NP-hard problems, if one is able to find a polynomial solution for one of these problems, you can solve any of those in polynomial time. And what it means really that you can find the shortest logical chain that explains disordered data, which means you can write the 14th play of Dostoevsky, for instance. You can uh, retrace the evolution. You can predict uh, earthquakes, behavior of the financial markets, etc. So obviously, there is, we operate under assumption of NP-hardness, meaning that we would never be able to find a polynomial solution to these problems. Otherwise, we would acquire skills compared to God only. So in our system so far, uh, for the small number of elements, 
we can see that the time it takes doesn't grow exponentially with the number of nodes. But perhaps this exponential curve is hidden somewhere else. For instance, whether we would be able at some point, as we increase the number of nodes, the elements in our system, would we be able to distinguish, discriminate between, let's say, excited state and ground state that well, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're still trying to explore, we're still trying to see, you know, how many nodes we need to actually beat, overcome classical computer. So this is our goal, not to find a polynomial solution. We act on the assumption that there is no polynomial time algorithm for these problems, but to beat, to uh, outperform the classical computation, starting with some, some number of nodes. So that's, that's the dream. That will already be quite, quite a big advance if we start solving these problems faster than classical computer.